Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part five of, it's part six actually, of, ah, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> I completely forgot. Part six of Exapunks. Yes, yeah, some, some hacker I am. Why do you think Gast gave you this? It's this, uh, he's talking about the games console, which they talk about um, here. Look, it's the hat, the tech, Redshift. Where is it? Uh... <laughs> It was a cartridge-based game handheld with a gimmicky 3 mode, 3D mode, or it's known as the expensive flop that led to their exit from the games business. But Redshift is more than that. It's super hackable and awesome, and I'm going to start hacking it. How considerate of him. Such a nice guy. Too bad the dev kit is password protected. He should have thought of that. Better not let that stop you. There's an unknown three-digit code, such as 473, that when entered one digit at a time into pass, will unlock the link between debug and secret. Find the three-digit code and create a file in your host that contains the code as a sequence of three values, followed by the development kit's RDKID. So I don't know what that is, and I've looked at the, the zine and it doesn't mention anything. So what I'm, my plan is, I'm gonna like enter codes into here, more or less in sequence, and then I'll spawn a sub-process which will try and get through here. And if it gets through, then we know what the code was. So that's the plan. And then I don't know what I'm going to do next because I don't know what's going to be on the other side. So obviously got a link 800 and then we got a uh, mark for the uh, C loop, for crack loop. So now what we're going to do is use the swizzle instruction which is somewhere in here. Here it is, yeah, the swizz. So you basically, you have an input variable and you have a mask, and so you can select a digit. So I could do 0001 to select the, the least significant digit and so on and so forth. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna swizz um, x and zero, like one, basically, right? And then we're gonna store that in, the, it, well actually no, we're gonna send that straight to pass, right? And we're going to repeat this for all three digits, but with different positions, right? So that'll be one, uh, two, three. Wait a sec, I think that's right. Hold on. One, uh, two. Yeah, okay, that's exactly what we're going to do. One, two, and three. So we'll do that in sequence. And then what we're going to do is replicate a try. So mark, try. The first thing this is going to do is link, and I'm going to presume that it's 800. And from there, I don't know what I'm going to do, so I guess I'm going to try and grab 199? I don't know. Actually, the first thing it should do is say, hey, I've been successful. So what it should do is copy the value of X into the M, which means that this thing should actually check out to see if it can, if a M is available. So yeah. So I'm just wondering, will this get through quickly enough or do I need to add a knob here? Or how about I do that here? Replicate try. Oh yeah, you know what I'll do is in fact here I'll add I X one X. So we'll increment that and then we'll jump back to loop. And that should, between this, this, uh, and then sending the next value, at this point we should absolutely know if we've made it through the gate. So I'm going to check here where we're going to do, um, what we're going to do is test MRD, yes, and if so, we're going to jump to done. So we're going to need like a place to do done. Mark, done, that's us. Okay, so now, I don't know what file we're getting, but we're gonna run to this location here. That totally didn't work, my thing crashed. <laughs> Let's try this, we jump back to the C loop, we send these values. And let's just step through this, one, two, three, send, zero, zero, zero. Out of instructions, apparently I fell out of this somehow. Surely I jumped back to C loop. Oh, test loop. Oh, hold on. Test MRD. It's not a jump. It's a, if there's data here, jump back to done. That's what I'm doing wrong. Okay, try that again. Ah, oh, there we go. Look, trying digits, triangle the digits. 
and we'll look, we got through. Now, what we're wanting is RDK ID, and there's these different files with core dumps and stuff. Oh, hey, yes. 199 RDK. I'm going to presume that the RDK is that value. So I need to put... We'll get pauses. So what we need to do is take... Have this thing grab that, and then run back and do the three values followed by the development kit's RDK ID. Okay, so I am gonna, I'm gonna store that value. So actually, lucky guess, yeah, right. Um, I know what that value is, so I need to store the value somewhere safe, so I'm gonna copy it. The only register I can use is the F register, sorry, the, the T register. So I've copied that to the T register, and then I'm gonna drop that file because I think that will generate a security exception if I do that and then, Link minus one, link minus one. I mean, alternatively, this thing could go back out if I want to minimize activity. Finally, we make a file, and what we're going to write is three-digit code. And three-digit code is encoded in X, so I'm going to do the same thing here, because we've preserved the old value. Swizz, X, and instead of writing it to pass, we're going to write it to file. So I could, actually, I could use the repetition code, except the repetition code would be just as simple. It'd be the same number of lines. Finally, I need to write the values of T into F and then drop the file or just halt. Actually, we're, we're going to simultaneously drop and halt here. Copper. No, it's copy. Let's see how that works. Oh, uh, what happened here? Something happened. Okay, once again, run to this point. So we copy X to M. But this thing has died already. Why did this thing die? Because nobody read from it. Nobody read from the M. That's why. So I need to... Can I void M? Uh, hold on. Uh... Void, 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 void. Read and discard a value from the M register. Is that... That forces me to do it. Okay, I guess I just need to do that regardless. So I need a halt here. And then I need a... Okay, so yeah, that, that reading doesn't work, uh, or has to happen anyway. Oh, there we go, test run complete. Getting values, hacking the system, and I wonder how fast we are. And now I could probably reduce my activity a little. So I, my activity is four, I top percentile is two, so I could shrink, oh wow. Why is, uh, why is that so long? How am I doing that in so many cycles compared to everyone else? Uh, hmm. I mean, I guess I could just unroll that loop a whole lot, right? So Gast used to work at a game studio. I don't remember. Yes, he was a programmer. I wonder what he was lo what that was like. I bet it was fun while it lasted, which wasn't very long because this console was crap. Making something that brings joy to people. Yes, I can see that. So now, uh, you have the option of Red Shift Homebrew which is just like another one of these freeform levels that Zaktronics loves to have. You're really gonna make a game with this? Why? I'm not offering a reward for it. Not everything I do is for you, because I am not Brian Adams. I'm not good at abstract concepts. I'll have to observe you closely. So look, there is a huge section in the zine on how you talk to this hardware, and I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, pad, oh, this is pad input values. These are, I have no idea. What are these? It's SQR1, the sound maybe? Enable 3D. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I have no idea what any of this stuff is. There is an excellent uh, guide here on what to do. Special registers. Uh, how do you do the graphics? So the GP register. Wait, how do you get the GP register? I don't see a GP register. 
Oh, this has a special GP register, G register here. So I guess you can have multiple X's, so like, um, copy, I don't know, one, 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 two, uh, G. And then, uh, jump loop, which will mark loop. Oh, um, okay, what's P, no? Oh, okay, GP is apparently two things. Okay, great. And let, let's copy uh, one to C. What's C the register? Oh, C0 and C, wait a second. Uh -huh. I'm really confused. Lots of stuff that I can see. Graphic, good. GX, GY. 112, 120 by 100. Okay, black and white. So the GX, ah, you can be positioned by writing to GX and GY. GX offset, GY. You can also, sprite can be changed at runtime, but the first digit indicates the operation zero off, one on, two toggle. The second and third digits indicate the pixel to change, X and Y from the top left corner. So 190 turned on the top right panel, or, Writing a value in the 300s to the GP register causes the entire sprite to be set to a character in Redshift's built-in font. So, uh, let's make an X. So that'll be 324. That's what we want. 324, and then we'll put the value to GX uh, 10. 10 to GY and mark loop and then we'll just do a knob. Now let's try stepping through that. Oh look, we got an X! Excellent! Great! So we have done something useful. Okay, I'm gonna have to do something with that later, but let's get back to the, the game. How do I get out of this mode? Oh there it is, there's the out button. Great! Let's go and have another meeting with Ember. Continue the discussion of morality with Ember okay. too. I have a real question to ask you. Say there's a trolley on a track heading toward five people. Three of those five people are vegetarians. Go on. There's a switch you can throw that will shut down a meatpacking facility that is located down the road. Unfortunately, the switch will also prevent the train from stopping because, because, wait, I may have reversed something. Recalibrating. There are too many variables here. Okay, let's return to this later. It's clear that you're implemented in EXAs, which have and tiny I need more processing power. Okay, Digital Library Project. Copy requested books on various topics from a digital library. Okay, uh, 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 books are stored in the host corresponding to the first digit of their call number, while a book's ID is 200 plus the last two digits of the call number. For example, book 512 would be stored in host 500 to 599. Okay, how do I get there? Uh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, so this is a sequential thing it shows us. So 800 goes forward, 500 goes back. Or sorry, minus one goes back. As the file 212. So wait, 512. Oh, so, and they're all 200s. Okay. Duplicate each of the books and bring them back to your host. And we've got this beastie here. I really wonder what that's doing. At some point, I'm just expecting this thing to jump out at me and do scary things. So let's create a new XE, which I'll call the librarian. And this will grab 300 and it's gonna look for the, the book number. So I guess it will copy F to M. Now, this thing is gonna copy M to X, that's the first thing. Actually, you could just do a step. Link to 800, do a couple of links. So now we've got the value, we need to take the first digit, right? So actually we can use the swizzle thing for this, right? So again, we're gonna swizz, uh, is it swizz? Uh, 
I'm gonna convert. So what I want is register X. And I should really store that in the X value. But the one we want is digit number three, zero, zero. So that should give me, you know, 500. Oh, but how do I make a host name out of this? Hold on. Yeah, never mind. Actually, we'll just copy. Well, ah, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a secret, super, super secret trick here. So I'm going to swizzle value three into the test register. Now we're going to loop, mark loop, and we're going to link 800, move forwards. Then we're going to subtract uh, X, sorry, T, one and store in T. And then we're just gonna, if true, jump back to loop. So here's the thing, if I, I'm decrementing the test register and when that reaches zero, this one becomes false. So you don't need to explicitly call a test method when you're working on the register. Okay, next. That should in theory be in the right place. Right, then it's, uh, oh, each of the books in question. So I'll need a reset as well. So at this point, this thing needs to drop the file because that's me got the file. Oh, you know what? It needs to seek. It needs to send the same value twice. So I'm going to copy that to X. Oh, wait, no, I still have that value so I can actually still use it. So now we fought, well, in theory, I've fallen out of the loop. I need the file name, so I need the last two digits. So I'm going to use the swizzle command again. X, and we're going to store it in X. So it needs to be, um, what is it? It needs to be 2, 1, and stored back in X, and then add X 200 to X. And that should be the value, grab value in X and now copy F to M. Let's just see if we can get to this spot. We crashed. <laughs> Let's try stepping through this solution to see how far we get. We go there. We go there. So that says in the... Ah, oh, wait a second. That's us in the first spot. So actually, let's get rid of this. Let's try this again. So we get 512 in there and we get the value five, right? So one, two, three. See that? It's decrementing. 400, five, decrement, and then it drops out. It swizzles it, it gets 12, it adds 200, and it grabs file 212. And now we're ready to copy the file back. So now this, uh, this one here, this executable here, needs to have dropped the file in question. So it needs to drop it and then uh, make a new file. And it somehow needs to copy that data across the network. Now it's all, it looks like it is all strings. So if I send a value like minus 999, that will be a, uh, a terminator. So what we're gonna do is copy loop. Mark, C loop, uh, clock loop. And we're gonna copy the value of M to X. Oh wait, you know what? We're gonna need to store s which state we're in. I know what I'm going to do here. Okay, okay, actually. Oh, cr crap, 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 crap. Connect to network. Actually, what I was going to do is going to take another 20 minutes. So I'm splitting this episode here. Until next time, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.